Zhang Li's rerun is right around the corner, and there's been a lot of talks lately about his potential in Genshin after some of the most recent changes Mihoyo have made. So this is an honest look at the most crucial things you want to consider about him. You could probably say the same thing about every character, but as someone who basically specializes in shielding his team, Zhang Li is actually a pretty complex character. Now, this video was made with a specific purpose to talk about his upcoming rerun and to cover a good number of important things you probably want to know about him, even if you already have him. So let's start with the most common and controversial topic. Is he bad for your team's damage potential? Or let me make this a bit more clear. Do you need to have really good damage dealers in order to use Zhongli in places like the final floor of the Abyss? Now, this is something that's been talked about ever since his initial arrival, and well, let's start by first looking at what exactly does he offer besides keeping your team alive, because it's no secret if you have his shield on, you are reducing the enemy's resistance by 20%, not to mention the fact if it's a team comp with Geo Resonance, then you gain even more benefits, but I think the best way to showcase this would be a simple test of damage comparison by, let's say, using Yenfei here, who can deal about 12,500 damage from her elemental skill, but with his shield on, on, it results in roughly 14,600 damage, or somewhere around 16% additional damage. So that's pretty good, right? By just using the skill and retaining his shield, you can expect to deal around 16% additional damage to an enemy with usual resistance, and this is just one of many attacks you'll be able to dish out with various team members. Still, if you look at someone like Kazuha or Benny Boy, both of them outperform Zhang Li's shield resistance shred by a sizable margin of about 25% more damage on average, and they also provide their own set of utilities, like Bennett is healing the active character, while Kazuha's passive continuously powers up team's elemental damage. However, the awesome feeling of ignoring enemies' attacks and just unloading your damage is sometimes far more important, like for example, when delivering Yoimiya's whole normal attack combo, you really don't want her to get interrupted, so you can get to her highest damaging shot, and having a shield is almost a must to fully utilize her playstyle. So, seeing how his shield is fine as it is, the actual thing that gets criticized a lot is his burst, because its animation is so long, and in floor 12 of Abyss, he really cannot afford to waste even a second, since Mihoyo have been adding more and more higher health enemies to simply check how much damage you're able to put out. In fact, it's sometimes even more favorable to just ignore his burst and only use him to reapply the shield because if you haven't built him as a decent sub damage dealer, don't expect to see these 100,000 meter hits a lot of content creators like to show off. But I'll talk about this more later in the video. In short, while Zhang Li gets criticized for bringing down the team's damage, it's important to consider his shielding capabilities and the resistance shred he provides. And also, let's not forget that Mihoyo finally fixed the problem where shields no longer take damage during burst animation. So in reality, by using Zhang Li, you can easily combine both his shield absorption and the invincibility frames his burst provides, not to mention the fact a lot of enemies will get petrified, giving you even more time to stay alive. And while it is true you need good damage dealers to offset Zhang Li's performance, there's a reason why two most popular team comps heavily rely on his shield, since the majority of damage comes from a single hypercarry damage dealer, which is why anyone who has Xiao or Hu Tao are probably already aware how great he is when paired with one of these characters. You know, lately a lot of players in the community have been speculating that Mihoyo are silently trying to make shield characters weaker because of how effective this mechanic can be when dealing with loads of different enemies. So seeing how Zhang Li is basically the strongest shield character there is, maybe it's time we take a look at this rumor that's been going around. I mean, it's not even a conspiracy at this point because you can just go to the top floor of the abyss and try to fight against Rift Hounds without a healer. It used to be that all you really needed was a strong shield to clear the whole challenge, but now that's not enough since even if you are protected from those doggo attacks, the corrosion debuff will still kick in and start draining the team's health, which you can kind of play around when you have something like the usual walnut composition that includes some healing you gain from Xing Cho and Hu Tao who can also do self-healing by herself, but other than that, when you're running him in floor 12 of the current abyss, you need a healer and that's an expensive modification to your team when we talk about in terms of losing out on damage potential. It's kind of ironic actually, Diona can provide decent enough healing from her burst as well as a pretty good shield, so she actually does more than Zhongli in floor 12 when strictly speaking about fighting against corrosion. And if that's not enough, the newest Fathomless Flames Lector has a special skill where he will deal true damage to the entire team, which means a shield won't be able to absorb this damage, meaning you will more than likely need a healer to keep the team alive, although there is a silver lining when using a shield against this monster, since before you can even get hit by this unavoidable damage, you still need to get marked by one of its attacks, and it just 
just so happens the shield can prevent from getting marked. Either way, this new lector is obviously going to get added into the abyss at some point, and bringing just the shield into the fight may not be favorable if you get hit by his true damage attacks. So as you can see, the latest updates have definitely been designed around a shield meta, and who knows, maybe even more things will get added into the game that punish you for using a shield. Well, the good news are, if you don't care about the abyss, then you shouldn't really concern yourself about Zhongli's potential. However, if Mihoyo continues piling up new mechanics that either ignore shields or even punish you for using them, this may require workarounds like adding teammates who can heal. Unless, of course, your team's damage output is so good, the corrosion mechanic doesn't even have the chance to set in before the challenge is finished. A good example right now would be Shao Geo Team, which uses double animal Geo Comp, and it's usually Jin or even sometimes Sayu that act as a healer for Shao, while Zhongli's shield is still utilized for shredding enemies' animal resistance and letting the Adeptide jump around without any interruptions. I think we've been focusing too much on Zhongli's shield, as if he's a one-trick pony, but the reality is, you can get a lot of flexibility out of him by just picking the right equipment. Like, for example, now that Yunjin is out, she's able to boost up his normal attacks quite significantly, and you can even utilize Jump or Dodge Cancel to quickly restart the combo and let the Spinning Spear Kick animation finish without committing to it, which means Yunjin will still power it up when you're already starting a new combo. I mean, physical Zhongli isn't that unheard of, and while doing the Abyss with physical damage at the top floor requires some insane artifacts and weapons, this is still an option you can go for when using this Archon. But I think the most important build that doesn't get an Enough recognition is his sub damage dealer role that usually gets overshadowed by his shield bot build, which only focuses on maximizing his health stat with the tenacity force set and black tassels pole arm, which is actually one of the most common builds you'll see when looking at the abyss usage statistics. However, if you can manage to achieve his critical rate and damage ratio and get some decent artifact sets like full noblesse or double two set of archaic and noblesse, suddenly you can start hitting pretty hard with his burst and even the elemental skill. And the funny thing is, even though he's energy cost is 40, a full 4 set of emblems is actually pretty strong on him, especially if you run him as the only Geo team member since his pillars randomly generate energy, and having this set actually makes it very easy to play him in nearly any team comp without ever caring how much energy recharge he needs. And what's even better, emblem set is extremely popular and considered to be one of the most resin efficient sets you can get from the domain because of its wide use applicability, so building a sub damage dealer Zhongli isn't that big of a deal if you can get some good emblem pieces going. Going. Basically, even if the usual shield build works really well on him, especially if he can consistently provide that tenacity buff, there's still some options worth exploring if you're getting bored of his playstyle, and his quick swap damage from burst can be built up pretty high, especially if you can get your hands on on one of those 5 star pawl arms, uh, assuming no one else needs it. Just when we started to get used to double banners, Mihoyo already throws a curveball at you with the choice between the strongest shielder versus arguably the strongest damage dealer. Both of these claims are subjective, of course, but in terms of raw potential, Zhongli and Ganyu definitely have it. Honestly, with the amount of new characters we keep getting each new update and the increased frequency of featured banners, I think it's for the best to just simply take a look at what you have and decide if you'll be happy with the outcome. It's not like we have content right now that demands a specific character character to clear it, even though this is a common thing amongst other gacha games, but right now in Genshin, you can easily use other shielders like Diona or Toma, while at the same time, there's plenty of damage dealers to choose from, so Ganyu isn't the end-all be-all of everything, especially if you already have someone like Ayaka, who can dish out some serious damage with her burst. And don't get me wrong, Zhongli is still one of the best supports simply because of how easy it is to add him to basically any team that lacks survivability, and as shown previously, you can even build up his damage potential with better equipment and artifacts, so as long as there's damage you can absorb with his shield, he is going to remain future-proof for a long time. Also, you don't even need any of his constellations to enjoy everything he has to offer, so even at C0, he provides insane benefits for the team. And as for the Coco Goat, she still remains remains as one of the top damage dealers, so if you already have found solutions how to keep your team, or should I say multiple teams alive, then she's definitely a great addition for lots of team variation opportunities, not to mention the fact she can be used in two of the strongest meta team comps.
Overall, while it's true that for some people who wish to optimize the best damage output, Zhongli can result in the so-called DPS loss, it's still important to consider that his shield can sometimes be the crucial thing that's needed to make the team work in the first place, seeing how there's living examples of Hu Tao and Xiao's most popular team comps. Also, even if Zhongli is defined by his elemental skill, you can still build him into a really decent sub-damage dealer, and this might become more relevant as we keep seeing more enemies added into the game that play around the whole shield mechanic, so providing additional damage is a great way to work against these new enemies. To be honest, Zhongli is still an insane character that lives up to the hype even to this day, but that doesn't mean it wasn't worth to take a look at some of the most common criticisms he's been getting from the veteran player base. Anyway, that's about it. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.